I'm off logic. <laughs> Moms with logic, is that what this is? That's, That's exactly what it is. I better get off the show. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> The conference really is geared toward women, and can you tell us how it's relevant to moms in particular? Well, I think that uh, the goal of this whole conference is to empower women to be who they are, not to be somebody else, not to be competing with somebody, but to be your best self, and then feel that living and pass it on. And I think one of the things that certainly happened to me as a mom is you're sitting home, maybe you've had a career, you've dropped out of your career, you're sitting there and you're wondering, what am I supposed to be doing? What can I do? And so I, I look at this day as a very empowering day that, you know, raising children is an extraordinary achievement. That is certainly my most important job. And I think, you know, that, that can't be said enough. So I would say that first and foremost, that the work we do as mothers uh, with our own children and to mother others, I think is the most invaluable contribution we can make. This is a little bit off topic, but okay. can you share with us your most embarrassing mom moment? Uh, yeah, I can actually. <laughs> I was uh, I was uh, driving my girls to a softball game. They were on the championship softball game, and they were late. And it was I was really you know harassed. And I ran, parked the car, told them to jump out, run across the field. And then I parked the car, and I parked the car, and I jumped out, and I ran across the street, and I ran to the field, and I got to my seat. And I was like, oh, thank gosh. And I was like, gosh, I feel relaxed. I don't feel the lack. This is weird. Oh my God, I left the baby in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I had left the baby asleep in the baby car, and I, I right away when I sat down, I felt like there was something missing. <laughs> it was the baby. I never see that. Look at her. I ran back across the street so fast. I was thought somebody would find the baby, even though I was gone like a minute or two. I was I was sobbing, crying because he was like sleeping soundly, no problem. And I was so horrified that I had uh, done that, but, you know, I, I see how, you know, you, you forget, you forget the baby. <laughs> That's such an it's ultimate. Big, I have never told that story, but there you are. That's a true story. <laughs> Ooh, an exclusive, a mom logic exclusive. Mom that's, logic exclusive. that's like the ultimate yeah. mom forget, forget moment. Oh, and what was interesting to me is I sat down, I'm like, it was like instant, I was like, something's wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm never alone. I should not be alone. I have a baby. <laughs> and the baby's in the car. Yeah. Speaking of motherhood, and now you're now you don't have babies anymore. You have no, a few no. teenagers, a I few teenagers, teenagers. It's challenging. Yeah, it's challenging. Well, we have a we kind of have a split decision here at Mom Logic, and half of the women think that it's okay and actually encouraged to check their children's Facebook pages, and half of them say absolutely not. It's like reading their diet. Well, I have one daughter who does not have a Facebook page. That's a great, that's actually a really good tiebreaker. Yes, I say, uh, if you can't show me this face that there's something wrong with it, so let's look at it together, or you should not have one. That's great. And now, you grew up in one of the most famous political families, and the children in this political candidacy really seem to be a big focus of the of the race this time. What what advice do you have for some of the children for, for how to cope with all the pressure of being in the political eye? So a that's question. a big question. It, yeah. I think it's, um, well, I think the McCain children are certainly older, so I think that's very different. And I think the uh, Obama children are young enough that perhaps right now they're enjoying it. But I think, uh, I think the best advice I would give to either one of them is to try to keep your children out of it as much as possible and try to allow them to become who they really are as opposed to uh, um, just your kids. But that's a challenge. Yeah. Um, I, I read that you and Arnold met um, nine years before you got married. Yes. Was, was one, did one of you have cold feet, or what was the story? Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to get married until I was 30, and I wanted to feel secure in my profession, and I wanted to travel all over the world, and I did, and I was very happy uh, working, and I didn't have like, wow, I need to settle down and get married. But uh, so I wasn't like in a rush, and my mother was 30 when she got married, so. Uh, I was afraid to go for any earlier. What are your tricks, if you could give us like one I trick to a lasting marriage? I think uh, I really, you know, don't know the answer to that. I think <laughs> you have to take one day at a time. Um, you have to respect the other person. Uh, when you disagree with them, to try to disagree in a respectful manner. I'm a big believer also in letting people be. Um, 
so uh, letting them fulfill their dreams and then you also fulfilling your dreams and trying to first and foremost make yourself happy. And uh, one of the big things I try to say to this conference is that there's a leader in each and every one of us and not to look to your husband to be your leader or your boss to be your leader or someone else to lead you. I think it's very important to lead yourself, uh, to spend time with yourself, understand yourself and then pass on your lessons to others. That's good. Thank you so Thank much. You.